Hello YouTube, RJ. This is part two of the IF amp build and we're going to jump right into it and continue on. We're going to put the uh, resistors on now. Now I sorted my resistors off camera, put them together, make it a little easier for me. And uh, we're going to get started with um, going ahead and putting some solder on one of each pad of the resistors, just like we did with the uh, capacitors. And just like with the capacitors, I won't make you watch all of it. Um, I'm just going to go through and each resistor, I'm going to put a, I'm going to tin up one pad a little. Okay, so we're ready to do this. So let's see what we've got. R1 and 5 is a 220 ohm resistor. It's going to be right here. So we're looking at R1. So he's right, going to be right there. So we're going to see about putting this guy on. So, same as before. Basically, what we do is come in here, team hot, slide it in, take him down, let it sit up. There's our one. Now we need R5. There's R5 right there. So he's going to be the next one of these. So we've got those two down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep going. I'll pick up and once I've got, I'm going to continue on doing the same thing. I'm going to pick up when I've got all these resistors done. And uh, it's the same as we did the caps. We'll go back and solder them afterwards. So I'll pick you back up when we get there. Okay, we're back. We've got the resistors all on for you. Pretty messy, a lot of flux everywhere. But uh, we're going to clean that up when we're all done. But now we are, we're ready to put some transistors on. And we're going to start with Q1 right here in the middle of the microscope screen. We're going to put him on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put Q1 on, and then I'm going to cut and go ahead and finish them. Because it'll just be a repeat over and over again of what I'm doing here. So just like with the diodes, we're going to put some flux on here. Okay. And then we're going to... Um, Find us a transistor. And getting flipped over, which can be difficult sometimes. And we're going to get him in place. Now, it tells you that this is a 2N2900 or and it's labeled 1AM, which is what I thought. So we will get him in place. We will kind of line him up and get him where we like him, push down and over in position good. Like this. Now, if I do a good job, I'm going to clean my soldering iron off. And I'm going to start with the single-sided, single pin. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some solder on my iron and rely on the flux that I put down to do the job. 
And if it doesn't come off pretty quickly, add a little more solder to, to it. You don't want to put your want move to get it on there. It should take some solder like that. Now we're going to just turn around and do the exact same thing. In fact, I'll start with I have plenty of solder off on that one. So what I'll do is I won't put any more solder. I'll see how it does just as we are. Look at that. He's on. It's that easy. Don't worry about the flux. We're going to clean the whole board when we're done. So I'm just going to repeat that. I'm going to put all the transistors on. And I'll come back once the transistors is uh, are all on the board. Okay, we've got the transistors mounted at this point. <clears throat> and as you can see, it's a mess. There's flux everywhere, but that's okay. We're going to clean that up, as I've said before. Now, the next steps, if we look over here at the instructions, the next step is to create these ferrite beads. You need to insert one inch resistor lead through the FB43101 ferrite beads. Okay, and I believe this resistor that they have given us here and the kit is for that because I find nowhere it's used elsewhere. So I think they just wanted to make sure you had a resistor lead to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just cut that right off of each side, the whole length. Don't worry about measuring an inch because I know I'm going to cut it off in the board. And then I'm going to get my small ferrite beads here. And I'll move the board over and we'll bring everything into view. And it's wanting me to put this through this ferrite bead and it very tightly. So I'm going to put it about the middle and it very tightly over like this. Insert and solder it in the board. And I'm going to do that on both of them. Okay, as you can see, our, our Z1 here. And our Z2 here are now installed on the board as instructed. Now it talks about using the optionally user supplied three pin headers for all these connectors. And at the moment, you've got all these three head, three pin connectors. At the moment, we're going to hold off on that. Not sure how we're going to connect to it, but probably not going to use headers at the moment. Okay, now we need to wind our toroid. So we need to set our board aside. We got quite a quite a few toroids to wind. So it looks like okay, we need to cut 12 inches of red 27 wire. So I don't have anything to measure with on the bench at the moment. So give me just a second. I'm going to grab a, a ruler and we'll measure out and cut this. Okay, so we got a 12 inch ruler from DigiKey. Uh, those PCB ones they give you if you buy lots of stuff from them. And it'll work just fine. So we've measured 12 inches and we're going to cut that. And It says retrieve the FT3660 ferrite from the SMD. Okay, so that's going to be the odd man out. This was the one that was in the bag. The others were separate. Okay. And let's see, it's wanting me to 18 turns. Okay, so we're going to do my normal toroid winding, but I'm not going to set up all my, for this particular one, I'm not going to set up the vise and all that. This wire is so fine, I don't need it to get this done, but it's going to be a little hard to show this, but I'm going to leave me enough pigtail hanging out there, and I tend to go ahead and bend that, even though I'm going to straighten it back out. That tends to hold, that tends, see how I bend it down? That tends to hold it for that first winding. So let's uh, let's get to it. So that's one. And we go through, and now each time you go through the middle, that's one. So this this wind this winding that's bent down at the moment, the very first thing goes through, and there's one right there. Now we're going to go through again with this, 
and that's going to create number two. So that's how you know, that's how you count your windings. It's how many times it goes through the core. So now I've got a second winding on here. I can straighten this one back up. So there's my pigtail. There's two windings. I'm going to tighten them up a little bit. Grab them and pull. Tighten them up a little bit around the core. And this is going to be hard to go every winding and show you. So I've showed you there. there's the first. Goes through the middle. There's the second. Goes through the middle. So I'm just going to keep on with that. I'll come back when I've got this wound. Okay, here we are with our 18 turns. And we're going to cut this off. And we need to get the enamel off there. My clip pliers. Not familiar with these. Clip pliers have a pair of teeth, serrated teeth on them, and their job is this right here. This is all they're for. You basically take a piece of wire, you put it in there, and you pull it, and it's hard for me to do it in a microscope, but it cleans the couple pulls will clean the enamel right off that for soldering. Finer wire takes a couple more pulls to get it good because you don't want to, you don't want to squeeze very hard you don't want to cut the wire but the larger enameled wires are real easy to do so it just cleans that enamel right off there for you got to get it right because it the, the copper colored wire kind of makes it look like it's not when I get it in certain places but you can see how it's silvery looking and further way up when I get it the right way so. That just cleans it right off for us. I'll leave those out because we're going to need them again. Okay, so we've got our Torad done. Tin with solder. Absolutely. So let's do that. Let's tin this thing with solder. Now, the only thing is, of course, this is going to get hot really quick so you got to be pretty quick tin it pretty quick I usually like to try to get it up here like this Boom. hard to do in the microscope I can tell you okay and then it gets hot quick all right it's tinned Start location L1. Okay, so let's put this one in. So there's L2. There is L1 right there. So we're going to put this in. As so. Now we're ready to solder. Clipper off. Sit tight. And that drawer is on. Yep. There we go. Okay. Now, we're just going to continue on. I've got three more toroids to wrap and install the same exact way. So I will come back when I get these three done and we'll look at how I've done. Okay, we finished up. We have our uh, toroids. We're gonna clean it. And this is just a solution I use to clean. Um, I use gloves. I'm working with these solvents. There's a little bit of mech in this and alcohol, 99.9% uh, .9 alcohol. For, and so we're just going to do a, put it in my little plastic unit. And this is one way I clean flux off of boards is just this right here. I've got some brushes to scrub with. When I need those, I'll grab one out. 
we mount. Drop it down here. Let's move this where you can see. You can see it's already looking so much better, but I'm just going to take a brush, kind of give a light rub over some of it. Being careful with my toroids and sensitive parts. Let's throw this rascal back in here. Do a little more rinsing. Careful of the solvents. And you can see that flux appears to be coming off. to do that. One thing I do is sometimes take my hot air gun. A great air dryer and stay off the back from things. And you'll see it'll dry it right off in a hurry. Solvent. Let's see how this thing works and get dried off good. Let's see a few places around transistors and stuff. And there we go. But you can just see how much better it is already. I don't unfortunately have an ultrasonic cleaner. One of the things I might add to the lab in the future, I could use one. They're fantastic for this kind of thing. You just uh, put some circuit board cleaner solution in, drop it in ultrasonic, turn it on for about a minute, and it just it, it does all of this very quickly and very well, better, better than I can do doing this. Um, Looks like. Let's get her dried off. Flux problems with one of those transistors where I use a lot of that flux. Yeah, this is looking good now. I'm liking what I see. I bet. This is what I'm looking for. Get that flux off of there. See, that looks good. Those transistors right there. So, look how much better it looks. Now I got a little too much solder on the resistors. I tend to do that you know, by hand like this, but uh, it doesn't hurt anything. All right, not bad for not having a sonic cleaner. So there you go. So with that, the board is done. We've got everything built. All that needs to be done now, that's C2A is that one that you don't add. Uh, all I need to do is get some connections to this and get it ready to hook up to the signal generator and the spectrum analyzer to take a look at uh, how it performs and do some testing. So that's going to be the next video. That's what we're going to do. Next video, we will uh, we will turn around and do some testing with this thing. So, hey, thanks for hanging out through this video. I know it's a little bit long. Back for the next video, let's see how this thing works. See if I butchered it or if it works and how well it works. As it is, it's tuned for 9 megahertz. They've got a note in there to calculate and change for different IF frequencies. So if we decided to use this on our radio, we would need to make a slight tweak because our crystal filter is 11.0592, if I remember right, megahertz. So we'll do that if we decide to use this in the radio. But for now, I wanted to build it just the way it was supposed to be built and test exactly the way it was supposed to be built. So next video, we'll see how this thing performs. So hope to see you in that next video. Please subscribe if you're interested in the content.